you're trying to evolve as a human being, just, you know, as someone who wants to live a better life, a more sorted life, and you're dealing with the fluctuations of the world, how do you know that when you take action, which is surrendering to love, it's an impulse from the soul or it's a push from the ego? Sometimes surrendering feels like maybe giving up, which it is not, but it's just that emotional burst which comes. So how is one able to uh, differentiate? As you normally lead your life, most of it is led from the ego unless it is someone who's very aware of what's going on. Technically spoken, you don't really have much to lose. If you start to use the Viveka Buddhi, the ability to discern and start to attempt to discern between the impulse of the Antar Atman, the impulse of the soul, and the clamor and demand of the ego. Firstly, what one has to remember is that there's nothing lost. Then, how do you deepen that sadhana or practice and how can you be sure? So the deepening of the practice is by actually in every moment bringing yourself to this moment. Because in this moment it's much easier to surrender. You're bringing yourself to this moment and then you can more feel that impulse than if you're scattered. Also, the impulse of the soul as it's impulsing a system through this life is very subtle and very uninvolved. It doesn't want anything, it's just impulsing. Yes, no, no, yes, it has two polarities. It's either a positive or a negative, a negative or a positive. That's how the soul's impulse is and it's almost imperceptible, whereas the ego is very loud. So you can distinguish actually. And even if you've made twenty mistakes, you're still, you're still better off than not doing it, obviously, because of the chances that you might do it right, you know. As far as the idea of surrender being giving up, it isn't giving up because you're surrendering to the soul and you already know it's the Antar Guru, it's the master within, so you can't possibly be giving up because you know that it is supporting the joyousness in the system. It grows the joyousness when you go with its impulse and when you go with the demands of the ego, it is suffering. So that, that, that assumption is taken into account as well. The sadhana, the practice of surrender to love, the surrender to love practice, if you want to call it that, is to bring yourself to this moment, in each moment, right now, here, 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 to bring yourself to this moment and then to be in that surrender state. And yes, when there is emotional trauma, when there is you know, conceptual trauma, too much of thinking, too many emotions, it is possible that you fall back and then you pick it up again and you go back into that sadhana. It is a practice, it is a sadhana, it's not something you can suddenly achieve in a minute. It's a practice, it's a tapas charya and it's a decision, do I want to take up this sadhana? And then if you really want to take it up, then there are steps and things that one can do. There's a body of knowledge. This is not just an idea of someone sitting here on this asana. It's an, it's an entire body of knowledge grown over twenty and more years. And it's a very new body of knowledge because it clearly focuses away from the enlightenment processes. In fact, it declares the enlightenment processes to be contraproductive to the actual fundamental joyous state of a human being. Because what is said here is that when you move into enlightenment states, you're moving into states of dissolution of identity, which is then contraproductive to taking up action in this moment, by this body, here and now. So it is a practice that you can take up 
after you ask yourself if this is what resonates with you. Okay, so it's very empowering, I mean. So when you say it's a practice that you can take up, is it a set of, like, is it a, a way of life? Is it a set of skills? Is it just being more conscious and more aware? It is a way of life, it is a set of skills, it is being more conscious and aware, it is a yoga system mm -hmm. Okay. and it is a new body of very precise knowledge. So, you know, we have a historical inheritance of enlightenment being the, the goal and the aim. And this, this teaching is in the spiritual trajectory, a point at which the, the very idea of moving into enlightenment is, is seen as an aberration. That what needs to be known of the cosmos, the various samadhi states, for example, Nirvikalpa Samadhi, Savikalpa Samadhi and so on and even the lower states of dissolution of identity are not aimed for at all because what is understood is that when there is a Samadhi state it means the perceiving identity has left the connect with the body. That's why, you know, people in very deep states of Samadhi they, they are barely able to speak, they are barely in touch with their bodies they are not present, they just are not. And this teaching is bringing the, the movement into the soul which is present here and now, the antaratman and its, its very present presentness, inner state of surrender. So there is a body of knowledge, many inspirations gathered in a body of knowledge that can be also pursued. You know, once one is sure that that is what speaks, then... Because it's also very new, new in the sense that the Kriyas which have emerged are very precise, they are, they are different fundamentally from most of the practices because they're not only conceptual in nature. You know, like uh, if you are a Neo-Advaitin, then your practices are largely conceptual. Who am I? I'm not this neti neti and so on, which are experiences, but have now been sort of twisted into being practices rather than experiences. If you take that path, then it's a very different mm -hmm. story than being very present here and now and actually learning surrender to the soul and to following its impulse. Mm -hmm. It's precise because the soul is material, it's, it's material, it's not a concept. Mm -hmm. But you can start with the surrender practice, mm -hmm. as has been described here. Is this action coming from the truth, from the soul, or is it arising from the ego? using the viveka buddhi, viveka shakti, the power of discernment. Great, thank you.